Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the point color tool in Lightroom and how it can help you make quick and easy color adjustments for your real estate photos. So the point color tool in Lightroom isn't that new, so you may be familiar with it already, but I find myself using it quite a bit to make adjustments, color adjustments to my photos whether they're photos I edited myself or photos that I had outsourced that I got back that I needed to tweak and make adjustments to. So I find this to be a handy little tool and I find it saves a lot of time from having to go over to Photoshop and mask things in and things like that. So it's something I use a lot in my own workflow. So if you're not familiar with it, I thought I'd make this little video to introduce you to it in case you didn't know about it because I think it'll make your life easier as it has made my life easier. So without further ado, I have a couple samples here we'll take a look at. So let's jump into Lightroom and take a look. Before we continue on with this video, I just wanna share a quick word about our sponsor, PixelMob. Are you looking for a professional real estate photo editor to help lighten your workload? Are you having a hard time finding a good and reliable editor or don't even know where to look for one? Or maybe you just personally struggle with editing and can't seem to achieve the professional end result that you've been looking for? If any of this sounds like you, you should definitely check out PixelMob. PixelMob helps take the guesswork out of finding a reputable editor and connects you with the right people to do the job. PixelMob is an awesome website that links you up with available editors capable of doing just about any sort of real estate photo editing you can imagine, including HDR blending, flambient, virtual staging, object removal, etc. The best part of all is that PixelMob vets all the editors prior to allowing them onto their platform to ensure that they can indeed deliver on what they say they can. I also really like that there's a peer review system where photographers can rate the editors from one to five stars, giving you further tools and helping you choose the best editor to work with for your particular job. The editor also does not get paid until you are satisfied with your order. If you've ever been in the search for an editor and tried a few out, then you know full well there's been a, such a sore need for something like PixelMob in our industry, and I really think a lot of us real estate photographers can benefit from this service. It's completely free to sign up, and if you use my link, pixelmob.com IREP, you will receive $5 in credit towards your first order, so there's no reason to at least not give it a try. You'll also find that link down in the description of this video. All right guys, so I have two different images here in Lightroom. I have this exterior photo here and then this interior photo, both of which I want to make some color adjustments to. These were actually edited already by an editor, but when I get my photos back, I like to go through them and make any final tweaks and adjustments if I did outsource my editing. So this is where this kind of comes in handy. A lot of times you'd have to send it over to Photoshop and instead of doing all that, you can just do a lot of this in Lightroom now, which is great. It saves time, makes things easier. So I just want to show you these two scenarios where I used the point color tool quite often. So what's cool about the point color tool is that you can use it here in masks by creating masks or here in the edit panel, you can find it down here under color mixer and you see here point color. I'm gonna show you how this works in both those types of settings. So first here, what I wanna do with this image is now that it's sort of winter here in New Jersey, uh, the grass, as you can see, is sort of yellowing and not looking the best. Of course, you could do like a grass replacement or something like that, but maybe you're not a fan of grass replacements or maybe you just wanna leave it with a natural look, but just, you know, enhance it a little bit and make it a look a little bit better. So this is one scenario where I use the point color tool quite a bit, but we don't really need to mask the grass because the only things green in this image, as you can see, are like the trees and the grass and you know shrubbery, whatever. So we don't mind really tweaking any of that because really how the point color works, it's gonna pick a color and make adjustments to that whole, wherever it sees that color in the entire image. If you wanted to hone in on a specific area, that's when the mask comes into play. And we'll see that on the next image. So what I wanna do here is just take the pointer here, the color dropper, I'm just gonna pick one of this area, like this yellowy green area here. And you can see this is the color that I picked up. It's like here is this like <laughs> brownish green, yellow color. Uh, so what you can do here is you can actually, if you hit this visual range button here, it'll turn everything black and white except of where the color is affected, you know? So as you can see, the entire grass is selected at the moment. You know, the house is nothing in the house except for the reflection of some of these trees here is affected. You know, this house is not affected. The sky is not affected. So in this scenario, 
you know, this sort of way of doing it works. And you can affect the range of that. So if you, if you know, if you go down on the range, you can see now like some of the areas of the grass are going gray. So if you go low here, it's narrowing in on that range. And if you, you know, go up, it's broadening that range. So now it's like sort of picking up some of the lights on the house now and things like that. I actually liked it like pretty much where it was, like right in the middle somewhere, cause it was not really affecting anything but the areas we really wanna affect. Now we can click off visual range and just look at the whole entire image. And so here we have hue shift, saturation shift, luminance shift. If we wanna change the hue, make, uh, see we can see it's green over here and more orangey right over here. So if we go more towards the green, you can see it's greening up the whole grass already, which is nice. And you can, you know, you could increase the saturation if you wanted to a little bit. Just do this to taste here, but uh, I'm just trying to illustrate to you what you can do and luminance will like brighten it or darken it. So it's really simple. So if we turn this off here, you can see that's before, that's after. Before, after, before, after. So it really, you know, just it just sweetened up that grass a little bit and made it a little bit nicer, a little more lush looking. And you know, of course it affected, if you look over here, like you know, it's affecting those trees too and stuff but it makes it look a little bit more lush, a little bit more green, a little bit more healthy, and a little bit more attractive. What's cool too is you can even add other colors. So if I try to pick this real gold color here, so say, you know, I wanna get rid of some of this yellow area and make hopefully make that green a little bit. So now you can see greening that up too a little bit. If I zoom out here. So I'm getting rid, rid of a little bit more of that yellow there. So there we go, before and after, before and after. Maybe this needs a little bit more adjusting. You know, you gotta do this to taste. So you can get a little carried away with this, so you gotta be careful. So you don't wanna make it look like toxic green or something like that, so just, you know, tread carefully. So there you go, that's one way I use this quite a bit is to adjust the grass in these images here, especially in the winter time here, where, you know, you're taking it from this to this, just making it look, you know, a little bit more healthy and attractive <laughs> without doing a grass replacement or anything like that. So that's one scenario. So now let's jump over to this other image and I'll show you another way that I use this uh, color point color tool. All right, so here's another image that was edited by an editor and I just wanna make some adjustments to this. They cleaned up a lot of the whites in this image, like the doors look good, the vanity is pretty much good, the toilet is decent, still a little bit, you know, tinge of color cast on there. But, you know, they didn't do anything with this mirror here that that is white. I just wanna, you know, make an adjustment there, like this light switch, like some of this stuff, you know, could have been cleaned up a little bit better. A lot of the times you get these edits back and you know, they, maybe they got a little lazy on them or whatever. And this this glass of this shower sort of got a, a green tint to it. That's kind of how it is, but I wanna just make an adjustment to that too, to kind of minimize that as well. So this is where the mask comes in handy. So if you go up here to mask and you know, you have, you can brush a mask, you can do all these things. Like this object selection is great too for masks. I'm just gonna go over this mirror like, like this. And look at that, like perfect selection. So again, in Photoshop, you would have to, you know, send this to Photoshop, mask that area in with one of the mask, one of, with one of the selection tools, I mean, and make an adjustment and then save it and send it back to Lightroom. So this is skipping all that. It's just making the process so much quicker and easier here in Lightroom. So with this selected now, I can go to the point color tool down here and just select here on the mirror you know, that sort of beige-ish color casty color here. And now I can, you know, just reduce the saturation on it, like almost all the way. I could even boost the luminance on it if I wanted to. I mean, obviously that's ridiculous, but I'm just showing you what it does. It just makes it brighter. But I can, I can, uh, I can uh, boost that just a little bit if I wanted to. You can see here, you know, before, after, before, after, before, after. Of course too, if I go back to the before here, you can see like this yellow wall in the background here. 
of getting affected, but I don't really care about that too much. It's a reflection, reflection in the mirror, uh, not too concerning. Uh, I don't want it to be too vibrant anyway, but it's cleaning up the, you know, the edge of the mirror here, like not very nicely. So say I just wanted to add this light switch slash, you know, power outlet thing here. And I can just go to add, I can just add to this mask object and just go, you know, right over this. And look, it selected it perfectly and made it white. I don't, it's already adjusted. All right, so if I zoom back out here, the other thing I want to do, like I said, is like sort of the greenish tint of this glass. So if I create a new mask, I'm gonna use the brush tool here because object selection is not gonna, you know, select that. The brush tool in Lightroom is great. So I'm just gonna brush over this. This doesn't have to be like, you know, super, super perfect either, really. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly do that. And now we more or less have the shower masked in with the brush. And now if I go to, again, to point color tool here, I just select anywhere on this glass here and it's gonna select, select this greenish color tinge that I'm trying to get rid of here. And I'm gonna go to saturation just I'm just gonna decrease that as much as possible. So you can see here, it's only getting certain areas. There's more color in there that's not catching. So if I crease my luminance here, you can see where it is getting, where it's not. So if I mess with the range here, it's not really affecting it. So what I'm gonna have to do here is just, you know, make a select, you make a couple more points of color here to select and uh, do the same thing. So I'm just gonna reset that luminance and, uh, Select another point of color here. It's by the door here, as you can see. And there, it's like a bluish green. So again, I'm gonna take my saturation down on that. And over here, you can see. That pretty much did it. So now if I go up to this brush mask, so before, after, before, after, before, after. Another thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go to tint here. Since, since it's green, we wanna kinda counteract that. I'm gonna give it a little bit of, a uh, little bit of magenta boost, and it's gonna even be brightened a little bit, like just my exposure, just a tad, tad bump of exposure here. And now if I look again here, before, after, before, after, before, after. So it just makes this much look like clear glass and you can really see the tile back there without too much of a green tinge or tint on it. This is a really nice feature of this bathroom so I really wanted to just make it shine through and highlight that a little bit better and you know, better represented here in this photo. All right guys, so that's pretty much how I utilize the point color tool in Lightroom. As you can see, it's a handy little tool that can save you a lot of time. So if this is not something you already knew about, hopefully this will help you in your own workflow and make your life easier. What do you guys think of this tool? Please leave a comment down below. All right guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Also take a look down in the description below. I got links down there to our sponsor, Pixel Mob. If you're looking for a real estate photo editor or video editor, check them out. They're a great resource for real estate photographers. Also, I got links down there to gear recommendations, a sky replacement pack that I created, editing practice packs, Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, a lot of great stuff down there. Also, if you're interested in following my own work in real estate, please follow me on Instagram at Burke Multimedia. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon on the next one.